and I believe it is a little bit after 3 o'clock if you're on the East Coast. Thanks for stopping in. It's a great time for coffee, whether it's noon or 3 o'clock. Uh, now is a good time for coffee, and now is a great time for that's right, the holiday blend. So that is what we're going to look at today. We're going to do a little bit of a deeper dive into our holiday blend. Um, we'll start just by taking a look at the coffee itself. So we'll pop over to um, the website here. You can find it on our website, of course. I always recommend you look at the, uh, the detailed coffee report. Um, you pull that up and it just talks a little bit about the methodology behind the coffee, what we consider its roast profile to be, which is right over here. Um, and then it talks about some of the qualities of the coffee or the what we, what we call the, the, the tasting notes, which um, would be found in the cup, right? So uh, in this case, uh, we're going to be talking about these things here. Um, the tasting notes talk about dried fruit, chocolate, and spice, right? I can think of nothing that would be more appropriate for, um, for a holiday blend, right? And to have those things in it. So, um, those are the tasting notes that we found in the coffee. What we're also going to do today, um, as you are preparing to have guests over at your home or if you're, um, uh, going to be making coffee today for yourself, or you want to try this coffee out, um, we're going to go again through some real simple um, ratios for making coffee. And if you've been watching um, the tutorials over the last eight months, um, you hear us talking about them a lot. And so I just wanted to focus on them a little bit today here, now that I'm in this new lab space, um, and just uh, kind of reiterate them, because I think now we're looking at a, a, the end of the year coming up, a new year beginning. Um, a lot of us will be making New Year's resolutions, I assume. So what better resolution to make than to um, re-up on our coffee game and get back to some basics? So um, let's talk a little bit about what those basics are. So I'm going to be using today um, one of my favorite easy entry coffee brewing methodologies, which is the Clever Dripper here. You see uh, that. If you are familiar with its construction, it looks very much like a standard Melita filter. In fact, it uses a number four Melita filter as well. Um, and the other tools I have here are uh, a scale and then something to decant the coffee into when it's done brewing. So we are going to start with um, our, our, our scale here. Now, we're not going to weigh our copy just yet. We are in fact um, not going to weigh the copy into here. We're going to start by weighing our water because again what I want to talk about today is the ratio of copy to water that we're using for this brewing methodology. So you will hear us talking about this a lot when we go through um, brewing tutorials about a 1 to 15, a 1 to 17. What do we mean when we're talking about that? What we're talking about is a ratio using weight of coffee to water. So let's start it up here. Can you guys see that in there? Zero. I'm going to use grams. What I want to do is, this is just a way to kind of think about it. We're, we're going to go ahead and weigh water here to see how much a, a full um, mug here of water weighs. Right? And that's going to get us a long ways to understanding uh, how much we want to produce. So let's see what we've got here. Boom, 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 boom. I'm going to pull it all the way up. Right about there. Okay. 266 grams. I don't know if you can see that on there. 266 grams. Okay, so that is how much water we have. nice to have. Now, something else I'm going to do here, um, you know we like to pre-wet our filters. I have this hot water here, so why don't we just put it right into my clever like that, right? Start warming it up, we'll pre-wet the filter. That's nice. So, now, I have my number of 266 grams, right? So, what is the math that we're going to use for that? Pop 
over here and we'll pull up the calculator real quick. So, 266 grams. Hey, Brendan, how you doing? Um, so, that is my number. That's the water that's coming out at the end. I'm going to do something. I'm going to add uh, about 10% to it, okay? So, I'm going to add, I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to round up to 70 and I'm going to, I'm going to actually add 10%. Uh, so, I'm going to, I'm just going to go ahead and, and call this 300, okay? Let's call it 300. There we go. So, that is the amount of liquid that we're going to be extracting. And then what we'll do is we'll divide it. I like a 1 to 17 ratio for this proof method. So what does that tell me? It means I need about 17 grams of coffee going into going into uh, to produce this coffee. That makes sense. I took the amount of liquid, gave it about a little bit more than a 10% addition, um, which is just there to kind of make up for water that's extracted into the coffee. And then I divided by 17. So 16, uh, 17 and a half grams. There we have a holiday blend. 13. Now, who out there in TV Mathematic Land can answer the question with a um, brewing method like the Clever, which is a full immersion brewing method? Um, are we looking for a fine grind or a coarse grind? Um, the answer, of course, is we are doing a coarse grind um, because the method relies on the, um, on the coffee being immersed with its full brewing time in the water. Um, and so if we had too fine of a grind when we're using the Clever method, just like with a French press, we would probably over-extract the coffee. There'd be too much coffee surface available to be extracted a period of time that we're extracting it. So we're going to coarsen it up uh, in order to provide a little less surface space for infiltration of water and for the um, extraction to be a little bit more ideal. All right, so I'm going to do two things at once here. I'm going to dump out the water here. And I'm going to grind it. See if we were able to maintain that. Okay, lost a few grams there. I'm not sure where, but let's let's try and capture that back. Shall we? do the most fun part of any hobby brewing, we actually add our water. Let's try this down to zero again. Let's get it. The great thing about this brewing method is that it really is, for lack of a better term, kind of set and forget, right? I have my coffee now. I'm gonna set a little timer for uh, four minutes. And um, and away we go. We can just kind of uh, wait while our coffee brews. So what would we talk about um, uh, other than the horrible uh, um, <laughs> the horrible pun which was just made by someone at that door from Bronson. Of course, of course, a coarse grind, of course, is what was said. Yes, we do have a, uh, a coarse grind. So we have our timer going. Um, what's happening for the holidays? I'll tell you what's happening around my house. This is uh, what we like to do right during this time of year is talk about what's going on in our lives. Um, we have moved out of the home. We are going to be selling our home. 
So we have moved in with my parents. How old is that, right? Now I know, I know, for just a short period of time while when the house was on the market, uh, we weren't certain that we wanted to necessarily rent an apartment. Um, and with all of the COVID restrictions going on, um, we all got tested and we isolated for a while. And we moved in with them because we thought, well, we're going to be listing during the holidays. Why don't we just be somewhere where we, where we want to be during the holidays? So, um, starting in November, this month of Thanksgiving, we get to be at home with the family, uh, and then we'll stay through uh, through New Year. So, actually, everybody wins. Our son gets to be with his grandparents a lot. We get to be with our family for the next eight weeks, and um, we get to completely evacuate our homes. We're not trying to live in it and stage it and show it all at the same time. So that's TMI about what's going on for me, what's happening with all of you. Um, give us a tour of equipment around around me. Okay, well, um, you could have resisted, Brendan. You didn't have to use the pun, of course, of course, but it's okay, it's okay. Um, so the equipment around me, I will speak a little bit about it. So what's right behind me right over here um, are bins. This is actually our tasting room in Olympia. And in the tasting room, it's kind of, it was designed kind of like um, a, a wine tasting bar. And this was done, oh gosh, almost 20 years ago now. And so kind of the cutting edge of this, it's a place where you can come and try the different coffees that we have on, on offer at any given time of the year. Um, we usually have four samples up here rotating. We have single origins, which you know may be only available for a short period of time. Um, we have the, the ones that come through yearly every year from our, from our farmer partners that we have long-term relationships with. We have different blends, holiday blend being a perfect example, a, a coffee that, uh, that we do regularly, but is only for a period of time. And you can try those coffees here. And then we also have brewing equipment that uh, we can demonstrate and that you can purchase here at the tasting room. So, Part of that, of course, the center part of it is where we display all these beans. Now they're empty right now because we have closed down the tasting room um, due to uh, local conditions. Um, and it has been given over to me to turn into a little studio so I can do things like this. Um, one of the nice elements though, and I will just give you a little bit of a, a cheat here. Let's see if we can do this. What's great about being in the tasting room is that if you look right over here, Aha, there we have our teams roasting. Yeah, there's Melissa, Brian, the roaster. So when, um, before COVID and uh, again, when we moved through COVID, um, this is a great place to come and get, you know, I, they have tours here of the facility. Um, people can see coffee actually being roasted. We can talk about it and then of course taste it. So that's probably the key piece of equipment I could show you on this tour. Um, behind me as well, I have a, a water tower, something that's very useful if you're brewing a lot of coffee. We're down to the last 13 seconds here before we pull this. Um, and, uh, and then right next to it is a, a, beautiful, a beautiful Curtis Brewer. So let's see what kind of, um, I don't know if I put two grams of water in here. And we're going to see what our extraction rate looks like. That is zeroed out. All right, here we go. All right, let's see what we have. 236. All right, so the copy is uh, decanting. So funny, I forgot to use my, my glass. Sometimes I just get confused, you know. Um, Krista says, I love our bean bins. I do too. The bean bins are amazing. Um, they're really pretty slick because we have our coffee up here just sitting in the bin. And we simply activate just like that. And you see the coffee comes right out. Uh, and it, it just, it, it's a beautiful, simple system. I can't, I don't know when they first devised these for retail, but I have to think it was probably at some point um, 
turn of the century, like maybe uh, not this last century, but the one before, um, late 1800s, um, when you know you still went in to get your copy at, at a general store, maybe, and they would have some selections, and they were probably also used for different types of drugs. See the early like bulk dispensers is probably what people are thinking of. I saw a little bit of water that's extracting out of this. <laughs> it, all right, two, seven. And look at that, just right at the. So I still have a little bit more uh, extraction loss, so I can probably increase that a little bit. It's a little bit under the lip of the lip pot. Hmm. You know, the uh, one of the things that I think remains pretty consistent in the holiday blend is a component of, of coffee that is um, further along on the road, what we call the roast profile or development. Um, as far as a uh, coffee goes, what we may say is a little bit coffee that's roasted a little bit darker. Just a percentage of that is is done that way. We develop that coffee um, to add um, a little bit of uh, what we call the, what I like to call it, I should say not we. I'll just speak for myself. Kind of the that sweet the sweetness that comes from uh, a little bit more roast being apparent in the coffee, um, and it I think lends itself really well to what we're trying to do here, which is create this just very easy to drink, full, in both in its body, but also in, in, its, um, in its aromatics, coffee, um, with a, a little bit of spice in there as well. It's something that you want to put on some slippers, sit down in a comfortable chair, and put your feet up next to a fire, and just sip on, whether it's the morning, uh, crisp, Cold morning, or maybe the afternoon when you have the day off in your home with your family, or even in the evening after a full meal. This coffee is complex enough to be able to stand up uh, after what we are traditionally usually fairly um, rich meals during the holidays for many people. So, yeah, that's delicious, and it's going to be a lovely afternoon cup of coffee for me. So, um, I always have to remind everyone for sure. Um, if you're watching, you can go to the link that uh, I put in here, and you can go right over here and use this coupon code. You can read it there. It says Watch and Learn 10. You go to our website, and you go to, in this case, the Holiday Blend, and you want to order some um, to try it out. Maybe you want to think about getting some gifts for some folks. You can use that discount code when you go to the website, and you can get 10% off your entire order. Let's say you wanted to get someone uh, a clever dripper, and you wanted to get them some coffee. Maybe it's somebody who uh, you think um, could take the next step in brewing coffee, and they need a scale um, or a bona vita kettle. Uh, you can get those things online at our website, and you can apply that 10% discount to the entire order. So gift time is upon us. Now, I don't want to... Um, sell short the idea that we're probably you're probably going to start seeing some more uh, gift opportunities coming down the line we'll make sure to highlight those so you can see them and so that you can try them and then you can even offer them to the coffee loving people in your life as we get closer to the holidays um, but this is a way to start 10 percent off of your purchases when you go online uh, using the code watch and learn 10 and then i will make sure both here and at our vip Club to let folks know that it's special deals. Now, if you go over to um, the Batdorf Boosters Club, um, you're going to see special deals there sooner than you'll see them here, either on our, our standard website or even in our Monday, Wednesday, and Friday videos. So I really recommend you join the Boosters Club. I'm going to put a link in here right now. Um, there is going to be early access to some, to any copies that come out, we always have early access on the Boosters Club. So you'll see it there. You'll get a notification from Facebook when that comes through. Um, and then we'll also usually offer um, higher percentage discounts for members of that club. So go over there, join up, um, and check back in with us here. Um, we do regular videos just to stay connected with you. 
and I hope you're doing well. I hope whatever your holidays look like, um, that they're going to be filled with joy and a little respite for what's been a very hard year for all of us. And that you get to be with the people that matter to you, hopefully sharing a good cup of coffee um, as you look at the end of the year and look forward to a new one. So here's to you. Enjoy some coffee and uh, enjoy your time turning your home into a cafe as we approach the holidays.